what you see here, hopefully, is the is, is, um, first page of our company, and, and uh, I'm Johannes, the first guy here, the founding partner of, of this company, Royal Majestics. We are now seven partners in the company, which, of, of which four these displayed here are working full-time for the company. And three partners are supporting us with their specific knowledges. Um, Royal Majestics is a um, Vigo accelerator. Anybody aware of what Vigo is? The program Vigo? Nobody? Yeah, yeah. Accelerator? What's an accelerator? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's more or less like it. It's and, and of course, accelerators, they differ a bit from country to country. In US, there's uh, quite a big difference, of course. In Israel, they are pretty close to Finland. And these differences in these accelerators is mainly that the Vigo program is working both with private and public capital. So the funding package in the Vigo program, in the acceleration program, is combined from the, the state authorities, those funds, and the private capital, which includes us. So Royal Majestics is not only an investor, in a sense, but it also works very hands-on on our target companies. This is why we have as so of here, we have four main areas which we believe that should be in every company in this manufacturing design. And where the previous presenter was asked if the design is important in his business, so he mentioned that it's a core, more or less the core in the business. So we work with the manufacturing industry and that design and fashion. There's a big, big difference when it comes to funding and, and requirements of cash capital. But uh, before I go into that, so um, these areas which our working partners cover are me, uh, for example, uh, taking care of having a background and having a knowledge of, of branding and um, brand building and distribution. Pelle Aldestam, the second guy with a nice hat there, he is he's a Swede uh, residing in Stockholm, Per or Pelle is uh, mainly on sales and distribution. Now, when I go through this uh, presentation, so hopefully I can, I can explain to you why these areas are very important for us also to master, not only the, the target companies. Pelle is the typical Swedish, uh, call it fashion guy. Uh, when, it was legally, when it was legal to leave the school, so he, he left to work with Swedish uh, fashion companies. You, can see, you see them here in Finland also, like, for example, the big one, Hennes and Maurits, and, and that kind of retail companies, which we don't have on this market, Finnish ones. So he has a really vast experience in what it comes to fashion distribution and, and, and call it the brands, the meaning of the brand of the market. Then we have Henry Kulvik, the third guy here, who is uh, in our investment specialist, and he's, uh, he's uh, a financial guy, financial guy in the background, and, and knows a lot about investments and how to, to package investments to, for our target companies. And he also the last of our, our working partners is a financial management specialist, and, and when it comes to this kind of talent, it's, it's an essential part of the company because it's really cash flow or cash intensive, these businesses which we are working with. So if we, I was asked to, to give, uh, to have my presentation from the point of view of our reflections or our learnings through this nine month period we've been in the Vigo program. In the Vigo program, there are nine accelerators, as of now, and we are the only one in this field. And we are talking about fashion design. Of course, it's not only about those things. 
from my personal point of view, it's about brand-driven businesses. And if you sort of think about brand-driven businesses, so there is no business which is not brand-driven, or at least no successful business, more or less, when it comes to consumer markets. So we work with companies whose target is on the consumer market, and there's not necessarily a need for any new products on these markets. You may agree on that. But there may be a need for a nicer one, for a more, call it, good-looking one, or something like that. And that's more or less the, the brand part of it. Uh, a couple of numbers why we feel this is very interesting, and, and the state, of course, when they took us in the Vigo program sees as an opportunity for Finland is that as, uh, from in 2010, talking about figures a bit, uh, the export of Finnish fashion was 250 million. Uh, the Danish was 3 billion. And the Swedes were there like 1 million, 250 million. 1 billion, 1, 250 million. And the, the Swedish figure doesn't include the big retail operators like Hennes and Maurits, uh, JC, the cheese company, or that. So there's a lot to do, I think. And, but if you think about Finland, and to ask you a question briefly about this post-Nokia, of course, it's kind of a bold, bold statement, but before the technology in, in Finland, we were and we are still known as a design country. So from our point of view, we are building on that heritage which Finland has. And if you jump outside the technology field, so to say, and you ask what are your feelings about Finland, so everybody was thrilled about the success of Nokia. But nowadays they more or less see as, uh, well, don't you have these design guys there? And they may mention out on whatever's there. And that's very true. We have a heritage in, in, in design in Finland, so we are building on that. But those numbers which I gave you half a minute ago, they, kind of not, they are not on that level we see they could be. Okay, back to the companies we work with. So, um, there are small companies in Finland. We do not have major, we still don't have major successes in this field. The biggest, maybe the most known company, is Marimekko. Marimekko was founded in 1951. Hennes and Maurice was founded like in the late 70s, the Swedish one, and that and that and that. So um, when companies in this field in Finland today think that they would like to start a design or fashion related business, uh, maybe they have an, an idea about what that could be. And, and more or less that idea, from our perspective, our learnings, is not coming from the market as such. But it's an idea which I have and find kind of amusing. And that's a good start. And I personally really appreciate and really admire entrepreneurs who can work with their idea, supply the family, and live on that. There's no need from my personal point of view for everybody to grow and go international. So that's a good start. But the main challenge with um, basing, well, starting your, your business with an idea, as you may know, you read all the books and you read the internet and all, all the, um, the blogs that the ideas are everywhere. So the idea doesn't make it. And it's the very same here also, unless it comes from a market. And there is uh, still a difference with this, uh, uh, between these Scandinavian countries when it comes to starting a business in this cluster or in this field we are working with. Uh, the, the Swedes are pretty good, the Danes are really good in, in uh, starting their businesses from kind of a market need, whether it's a brand level, the pricing level, or the product level, or a combination of those three things. 
which I would like to call a concept. So it's not the product, it's not this jacket, for example, only. I, I think everybody can, if they want, they can do up this kind of a jacket, even in Finland. I don't see that being a problem. But the main challenge we found out is to understand that uh, the concept may be a striking factor, not the, 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 the idea only. And the other thing is that if you start up with an, only an idea, it may be a bit difficult to sell your idea to people outside you. Maybe you're becoming partners or friends or whoever. And, and <laughs> almost all, or I, I think every of our company or the companies in Finland, they want to reach some kind of success. Where the level is, is of course a personal thing. What is success, it's relative and so. And, and, and thinking about this success, what is a success is pretty hard to, to in beforehand say that we are going to make a big, huge impact or huge success. So we've been thinking a lot about this thing, how to succeed with our target companies. Because um, we feel that uh, it's a really vague thing what the success is or when it takes place. Usually when you read the books, the success is starts in a garage. Everybody started the business in the garage for I don't know why. And maybe that's a buzzword gives the venture capital come, oh you start in the garage, well here's ten million or whatever because you need to start in the garage and, and, and uh, that kind of stuff. But uh, that's always when the success has taken place. You find the path why we became successful. If it's like this, which I believe it is, there's a lot of betting, so to say. Am I going to bet on the right horse? Am I in the right place? Am I there in the right time? And do I have the right idea? And I think that if it's like this, it's very difficult for me to master the business by myself. Because I'm only one person, I see things in my own way, I interpret them in my own way, and I sort of build, knowingly or unknowingly, on my past. If there are two persons, there's more wider view. If there are three persons, and you understand the picture. Because when you understand that, okay, this is a good idea. I, I or we want to work with this one. Do we have the money? Usually the answer is no, we don't have the money. So what should we do? Should we quit our job and jump on this idea? No, maybe not. Well, who would believe in this idea that much if the success is like I pointed out here? Who can we talk to? Who can give us the money needed to start with? At least in this part of Espo where I'm now, a lot of people are involved with uh, both Vigo accelerators, uh, venture capital actors, and that kind of thing. They know the, 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 the structure, more or less. But in the field we are working with, those people may not know, because that's not in the daily life of them. They are really skilled. They are really talented craftsperson, craftsmen. They can do their stuff. But maybe they are not so aware of thinking this money stuff. based on nine months' learnings, remember. So, um, maybe three alternatives for getting the money. Of course, you talk to your friends or, or your family. Uh, we, I have this idea, and, and I think this will be really huge. And I think they will believe it you also, because they are, it's your father or your mother, and there's no reason for them not to believe in their children. So if they have the funds, they will support you. Of course they will. 
a bit tougher is, of course, to go to bank with the idea and say that I have this idea and I really believe in this. And here's Kalle and Petra also who believe and we only need like, say, 50,000. That's okay. And, and uh, the problem with the bank of today, uh, banks of today is, of course, that it's really, really tough to get any money from a bank for businesses unless the father or the mother not jeopardizes, but is, is willing to put their house or their summer house or, or their other assets as a guarantee for the bank. Because the fa bank in, 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 in general, they don't care that much. They, of course, they want to see that, that the businesses succeed, but if they don't, they are mainly concerned about getting their money back. And if you can't pay, your mother can pay. I think if, if she can't pay, she will sell the house or we will sell her house and then we get the money back. And that's more or less the, the thing. And um, the third instance, well, I label it private capital. Depends on who you ask. There might be professionals here who, who have a better definition of, of this, but it may be called also venture capital. You go to a totally new person, totally uh, random. You never met him or her, and present your idea. And uh, if you go like this, you may not get anything there. You may get it from your mother and father. If they support you, you get it from the bank, the money. But I would like to see a professional working in a private capital company or venture capital company who will put the money on based on these ideas. And again, in literature, so you read a, which I thought was a cliche, before I more or less came acquainted with this business. My background is not in, in financing or investing. My background is in, in creative businesses. So this has been a, a learning curve for me. A really, really interesting learning curve, a tough one, because take it one or two years back, I had a lot of cliches about this funding world, which I now understand are not cliches, but they are really true. And that's, uh, and that's, that's tough to admit that you'd be wrong in a lot of things. So this foreign guy or entity needs to know a lot more of the business you like to start. And in Finland, the market for early stage funding or business angels. Uh, well, it has been coming up lately, the past year or two years, yes. But one of the main factors why we, we go program was started by the Ministry of Employment and Economy, which runs the program, the state authority, was that there is no business angel funding for start-up companies in Finland. So they cannot get this, call it, 10, 20, 50,000 anywhere, except from the mother and father. So that was one of the reasons. Of course, the bigger reason was to, 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 to create jobs and create uh, tax, pay, tax money and, and attract foreign investors to finish businesses. And in technology and, and, um, and, and uh, gaming world, that has been a success. Not in this field yet where we are working in. So you need to show a lot to these um, venture guys. And there are a lot of stories, of course, uh, there are a lot of books written about how this uh, business works, and it more or less our business works in the same way, so I am not going to explain exactly. It's difficult to explain because every case differs from each other, but um, usually we are been pointed out as the bad guys. We have the questions or, or the annoying questions that you are not supposed to ask because I have a brilliant idea. But that's more or less our job. If you think about it, that um, you would say have 50,000 and you would be willing to invest in something as a person. So of course, maybe you think, I don't know if you think so, 
many people think, okay, when do I get this 50,000 back? And okay, some may think, okay, what's the multiple? How many times this 50,000 do I get back? That's, uh, I think, a uh, 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 regular person would reason in that way. And the irregular, meaning the father and mother in this, <laughs> in this context, they are not thinking in this way. They are supporting you. So there's a big difference with the, with the money as such from my personal point of view. You can find business even in Finland which are so cool that people want to join the ride in, in our area. There's no problem for these businesses to get friends to put in 10, 15, maybe 20,000 because they want to be on that ride. And then the business itself or the founders or the product is so appealing. I want to see what, how long can this make. And I want to be with this, with these guys. And maybe someday I get my 10,000 or 15,000 back. If I don't, it was a good ride. Of course, then you need to have an appealing or a promising brand, which can, as a brand, work really well in the big international scene. Then you get supporters who will be with you from the start. If you only have a product, it may be hard from my personal point of view to attach people who are in the business with their hearts. Usually they are with their heads. And, and in the venture field, they, it's, 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 it's a money, money thing. We, as, as, a, as a company, we need, of course, we need to look after our own investment, but we also need to look after the other private partners' investments who are joining our target company's funding. And that's why me, maybe, have, maybe we are going to, we are, that's why we are having these not so nice questions. You'll be nice people, of course. That's not that question, but, but this is our work, so it, it's more or less like that. Any remarks or questions on this level? Okay. So the bank is an easy one. They don't care uh, in a good way. They don't care as long as you pay back. If you can get the money from the bank, that's maybe the best way because then the mother and father is not asking, oh, oh, my dear, how is it going now? And I read the newspaper and blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, I know, I know. And you know mothers and fathers, at least mothers. And, and, um, and so that's, uh, that, that may be the bank. Uh, the, the, the thing with the, with the private or the foreign capital, as I may also say, is that they are really following you and your performance because of these reasons I mentioned. They need to report, they need to show to themselves and their partners in, who, are, who are joining the investment how the performance is going and when these partners may get their money back and so on and so on. Not to dive too deeply into that. So this leads me to, to a question of people's business. <laughs> okay, every, every business is people's business because people are doing the business themselves. But if you the idea and the people on the same level. So I would imagine that if I or a person would invest in an idea, maybe he or she would be really interested, who are these people behind this, this idea? What may their track record be? What have they done previously? Are they executors? I mean, do they really do the stuff? Or do they just kind of uh, write out the big picture, this would be nice, you know, sitting with a couple of beers with your friends, everything is nice after a couple of beers, and everything is possible, and, and, and the world is good, and life is good. That's one question. I would bet the answer would be that I'm investing in the people. Uh, there is... Oh, in many books, you can read that a brilliant team with a mediocre idea 
is a better investment and a brilliant idea with a mediocre team. Because if there's a brilliant team and the idea didn't carry or through that brilliant team would come up with a new idea. If there's a brilliant idea, mediocre team, mediocre not meaning persons being mediocre, but on this execution level, on this, uh, this uh, motivation level. They will be so start after, you know, that this idea didn't work out, so they don't have any energy to put up any new idea after that. And we've been in discussions with our companies. We are sort of seeing in some cases that maybe this is a lifestyle business. Lifestyle meaning that it's a business for me and I would like to see myself growing. There might be a, a slight contradiction to, to how the outsiders or, or, or the persons you don't know sees the business. They may see the business, they would like to see the business growing. And that's why I wrote there that the big win if you're reaching for a big win, not everybody is, but if you are, it's always, well, it needs a great team. And our reflections is that uh, in the field in Finland, in that field, we are working on the, the, the business has started with entrepreneurs, yes, maybe more design as such, craft-oriented entrepreneurs than business-oriented entrepreneurs. And then I use this word scalability. I'll come to that later. So maybe they are keen on the product and it becomes, so to say, their baby. And to let go your baby, you know? Nobody wants to do that. But if you want to reach high, you need to accept that the team, from my personal point of view, is not four times Johannes. It may be one of me and then three different kinds of people who are viewing that very same thing from different angles. Then we made up, may end up doing something big. But the tendency of, of a human being is to, to get together with people who are more or less similar to yourself. Like my friends are more or less sharing the same values as me and, and whatever stuff. And that, 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 that's psychology behind it. So it's not so easy to talk to a totally different guy with totally different values. Not a bad guy, not a nasty guy, but totally different values to talk him or her into your team, knowing that you are not... Well, you are not so keen on going to have a beer with this guy. You appreciate his talent and his, uh, his professionality. But there's something like ah, bugging you with the person. But that's something you need to drop. The other thing is that uh, the, the other thing here, uh, during these nine months of, of uh, working as a Vigo accelerator, is that um, in order to get together this great team, you need to let something go from your company. That may be even a harder task for some people to, to accept. I've been talking a lot of, of, of guys and different entrepreneurs in, in this autonomy area, more or less related to techno technological stuff, and, and, and I see a difference there. Uh, these entrepreneurs or, or startup entrepreneurs from, from this venture girls, um, uh, cluster, they think slightly differently, maybe a lot differently, about this pizza pie slice thinking. They are more or less, they understood that uh, I want to be a part of something big than owning, being 100% on something small. Uh, there might be some uh, signals coming from this uh, more or less uh, crafts oriented, creative oriented world that, that people are not thinking in the same way. I've been seeing and hearing uh, during the last months here. And 
for some persons who are already running a decent business, uh, uh, say some hundreds of thousands in turnover, which is a really huge, huge thing, uh, success already. If you start from zero, it may take you two years to come up to 200,000 in turnover. I know. That's one level, but to keep it coming, to have a daily cash flow on that 200,000, or maybe even growing to 400,000, it's a really tough job. And if you can master doing that with your own idea yourself, of course, it's difficult to let anything go from the company. But when, the, when somebody is investing in a company, he or she wants to see his or her money growing. So it's not like a bank. It's an investment. They are available. There are some other alternatives for this very same investor, like the stock market or the bank, or I don't know, bonds or whatever, or betting on horses, I don't know. So it's not only that. It's not only your business. There might be some, well, at least I've read, that there is a thinking that if, uh, if an outsider or a private capital, venture capital comes in the company, that company or that very person wants to take control over the company and, and I as an entrepreneur lose my majority or whatever that word would be. I cannot rule the company more. That, that's, a, that, that's, not, that's a silly thinking because if the entrepreneur loses his or her motivation doing the stuff, an investor doesn't get his or her money back. So why would an investor think in that way that I want to take control over the company? That's, that's, uh, that's not the case. They want to be on a fast ride, on a ride, earning on, on the side of the entrepreneur, so everybody is gaining at the end of the day. Then, of course, there are goals or limits where to set the goal. We reach this and we do this and that and that. And people talk about exits and, and so exits all over the world. And it's only exit and exit. And when is the next exit? And where is the exit and exit and exit? It's not only the exit. It can be a fun ride. It can be a profitable company. Some investor wants to be on that ride. But somewhere around, I would like to see the money coming back. So, um, uh, reflections of, uh, of our learnings in this field. In, um, in these design related or fashion or manufacturing companies we meet, we discuss with, we work with, uh, one thing which we feel is not that strong in the companies, it, it, it's the thinking of how the daily money is working and when is the money needed, the cash flow, monitoring the cash flow. And just as an example, if you want to, if you haven't, very simply, you have a turnover of 100,000 for this product, which could be a design product, and you want to reach 200,000 a turnover within six months. So say with the 100,000 in turnover level, the cost of this product, the bill you have to pay to the factory before you can sell this product, say it's 50,000. So you have the bill on the table, okay? Turn our 100,000 and now I need to pay 50,000 in order to be able to sell my product. So that's a cash flow thing. That 50,000 needs to be paid and it takes a while before you get that 50,000 back. So if you want to reach 200,000 level in the turnover, that bill would be 100,000. To be paid to supply chain in order to get the product and sell it. And this is a major difference with the technology or internet-related businesses and this manufacturing business. The scalability of the scale, the internet, 
does not need that much money to scale up. These businesses need. It's very, very cash intensive businesses. And the working capital, which we are working on with our partners, an instrument how we can solve these, well, not daily issues mainly, but say monthly issues. Do we have the cash on the account which is needed because the products are in the customs? So we are working on that kind of instruments also, so we can help the entrepreneurs to, to, to master this very, very tricky thing, cash flow. How much time do I have? Fifty minutes. Okay, good. So, cash flow, monitoring the cash flow is the main thing which, and as I said earlier, so we do not work as, as, the, as, as the books say, that venture capital works, that they put in money and then they sit in the board and, and then they say wise things. But we also work very hands-on with the companies where we see something missing. That this part, this one, missing when you grow. So we put our guys there for a while till we find a proper person in that company. So we, do, we work hands-on, not only in investing. Uh, in no particular order, but there are some random points which are... Uh, Pretty common in startup businesses, not necessarily in, in our field, but in all fields. And if I start from, uh, from the bottom, uh, my personal feeling is that there's a lot of em emphasis put on that you need to write a proper business plan. A lot of time, it takes a lot of time, a lot of nerve, and, and it's a busy work. The good thing about writing it is that it, it uh, forces you to think about the elements in the business plan. But then again, the business plan is full of assumptions. If, if, if. So instead of, from my point, from my perspective, instead of putting all the emphasis, all the energy on writing a business plan, so put emphasis on how do you solve the assumptions, how do you ta tackle the assumptions? Because that's the way you can sell your idea better. And the other thing, Again, a personal point of view. Who reads a business plan of 48 pages? Text. Who does it? I don't. So, a lot of gut feeling. Are these good persons? Do I believe in these guys? Yes, I do. That's one trigger. So, not the business plan itself. That's one reflection. And from our field, they are not learned, they are not educated in writing business plans, uh, the, the art, school of art or that kind of a, um, uh, universities. So it's not their daily job to write business plans and it, that takes even more energy for these people to do that. Uh, then I al already mentioned that um, what differs us in Finland slightly from our, our Scandinavian neighbors is that uh, we have a tendency to, to, um, to design a product before, uh, because of the product. Not because of that somebody may need this kind of a product on the market. I have an, um, a good case uh, where I can, I can exemplify this. And uh, when I talk to our partners, Pelle, or, or that, that network in Sweden or, or Denmark or Norway, so you can find 20-year-old old people thinking about business even being a clothing designers, they always have this business thinking with it that this kind of a product would fit that kind of a group of people. Because again, we all have clothes, we don't need necessarily new clothes. Okay, if they're worn out, we need new clothes. But maybe we need something more funny, something more, which more I like more than this one I'm using now. So that brand thinking, that's also taking it from the market. Scalability is, uh, is something which is, which is not thought that much. Uh, in our case, uh, the things get really, really a lot more uh, tricky when the business grow. Even if you double your revenue 
doesn't necessarily be that your workload doubles, it may triple. So there's a potential that what the scale brings to you. Not, <laughs> I already mentioned the cash flow. And uh, in, in, brand, uh, in brand driven businesses or consumer businesses, so the scalability comes with the brand. In technology, it comes with the technology or a device, a technological device in something that you can do better than before. It doesn't cost that much more to multiply the technology, but of course it's cost always more to do 100 of these jackets or 10,000 of these jackets. So the scale comes with the brand. You need to put emphasis on the brand in order to, to cope with the fierce competition which is in the market today. It, it's, it's totally different thing today than it was like uh, the end of the last century when I got accustomed with the, with the fashion and design businesses. Uh, the internet wasn't that penetrated. It was not the common thing for people and, and uh, advertising did the job. The traditional advertising doesn't do it anymore. You could build your brand in a different, more easy way than today. And, and so it's, it's a totally new world. You could find special places where you can put your product, like in Paris, one shop, Marie Louisa, it's a really traditional shop, who always, uh, whose business idea was to spot upcoming new brands and display them in their shop as the first in the world. But now they can't do it anymore because uh, the big brands are being so big, like uh, Gucci and stuff, and they do good products. So the game is totally different. So it's really, really hard to enter the, the international market. And, and so the brand is the, brand is the thing. Uh, we, I've also seen that, also seen that um, the thinking that, okay, if you give me 200,000, we'll fix this. Uh, but uh, that's uh, the, the need for the money only. Not doing anything with the existing management or the team but the money only, and that's the wrong way of thinking because we found out that if, 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 if only the money goes in the company, it goes out from the company also because it has done it in the past. So why would it be different? So you need to make big changes in the company also and to understand that it's not only lack of the money that, uh, or, or the, the money that solves it. There's a tendency not to not to view the competition as an existing factor, but seeing that our product or we are better than the competition and don't worry about the competition because our product is better. And that's a very, very subjective view. And it's not true when you go to the market. You need to be aware of the competition. As I told you, it's really tough. Some may find it uh, important to, uh, when, when, uh, when the companies or the entrepreneurs are pitching for money that they want to tell the stories that they think you want to hear. But I don't think so. Because of course there needs to be something significant with the company pitching for money that I haven't been thinking about. It brightens it up. If you can talk to your mother and father in a pretty easy way, hey, come on now, you should understand, I will fix it. You cannot do it in the bank anymore, <laughs> not with the venture capital or the private capital. So you need to believe in your product and go and sell your product and your idea self and not think so much what we or me, what I'm thinking about. This thinking big versus small. To get big, you need to think big. I, I had a meeting with um, pretty uh, successful venture capital person last Friday and we were discussing a case which we are working on and um, he was pretty frank with me and he said that okay if these guys are only think that they do something slightly better improve something a bit that's not an interesting case for me he said they should do something radically different Thinking, of course, with the product, but doing something with the product. And thinking that that's, that's not the case they are going to sell, that radical product or extension. 
but that's the brand driver. That shows the customer this company is thinking forward. So a giant leap or a leap of faith or whatever you want to words you want to use here is the way to go. If you want to go big. I already mentioned that we have a tendency of, of uh, doing business or, or getting acquainted with persons like me. And uh, we had a case there where we made a mistake. And uh, the, we, well, not let, but we went on the line that the company wanted to hire a person because he was um, a boyfriend of the company's founder, a new boyfriend. And, uh, <laughs> well, it didn't work, so... so. That was the thing. <laughs> One, just I promised to show. I promised to show you uh, what we are looking for in Finland. Uh, some of you who are into fashion jeans or skinny fit jeans may may know the brand called Cheap Monday. Uh, it's a Swedish brand which was established by this guy Orian. Uh, 2004, and our partner Pelle was with him. When, when starting the, the brand or the business, and they worked, I don't know if they worked, as I'm telling you that they should be, well, well, be uh, companies should be working, but they worked four years with that jeans brand. Now I'm talking pair of trousers, right? Not this, but this kind of trousers. And they sold the company to Hennes and Maurits for one mil 100 million euros. A jeans company. A jeans company. Not a technology company, or internet company, whatever, a jeans company. Orian did own the company 100% and he understood, I know this guy from 15 years back, he understood that this uh, 800 million, uh, it's in Swedish, but uh, they are kroner, uh, kr krones. So the, the selling price for the company was 100 million euros to get 60 million in cash. So he owned 100% of this company when they started with Pelle, Pelle jumped off. He is regretting it, still today, of course. But he understood that uh, the company needs something else than him designing the jeans. There was a market fit. By the day in uh, early 2000, the jeans did cost. It was a uh, silly era. People were after jeans that cost plus 300 euros. Those were fashionable, people thought. So Orion came up with an idea. We do really fashionable skinny fit jeans for 50 euros. That was, that was a market fit, a striking factor, fashionable jeans, good looking, skinny fit for those who like it, a fraction of the price of the existing price level. So this is the, the kind of people we are looking for, understand that they know they can do something and they, they know how to do it, but they understand that they need somebody else to make it big. And he's still in the jeans business. He didn't sell his soul, he sold his company and earned a lot of money. And now he has Orian Anderson jeans brand. So, to sum it up, it's always like this. Somebody gives you something, whether it's to me or somebody else, he has some kind of second, he wants to have something also, right? So, that's the way. That was it. Thanks. And the questions? Yes, please. Yeah, it is too. Phone. It is too long time. Distance too. Is it working? Is it microphone? Yes, it is. Okay. I have a comment or question uh, uh, concerning uh, crowdfunding. My name is Kristina Pakkonen. I come from uh, today. I'm representing uh, leading Swedish crowdfunding um, company or platform called Funded by Me, which is launching in Finland in the beginning of February. And um, I would like to know what to, do you think about crowdfunding? Is it an opportunity for uh, new startups, new entrepreneurs as well? And is it safe to look for funders via internet and give shares away to for, uh, unknown <laughs> investors and, and w what to consider when do it? I don't know about the legal stuff. I've been involved with a, uh, with a company who is in the, in the liquor business, a Finnish company, and they started the crowdfunding 
uh, one and a half year back, and then there was some limitations with that, that you could not sell, I don't know if the case is anymore like that, per country, you could make the offer for, to 99 persons. And if these 99 persons denied the offer, you couldn't make it to you know, uh, more people. Is that true still? Are there are there limitations or regulations around yeah, that? Yeah, there there is limitations, but there there is certain ways to um, live, <laughs> live and and go throughout it. Yeah. I I have that's the only case I've been I have not been involved. In, I don't know too much about it to give my wise words, so to say, on that. But of course, uh, this company I, I mentioned here, uh, you may probably know it. Ron the Jeremy is the rum, the Finnish rum. Ron Jeremy. May people know, I don't know, but <laughs> but uh, so they started with that, and I I haven't spe been speaking to all the other founders yet, so I don't know how it's working, but they were really serious on that. But uh, that's the only answer I can give to you now. So you say that you are in Vigo program and uh, accelerator and you have been in this business nine, nine months. How many investments you have done? Uh, three. The second question is that when you are promising something post no, to post Nokia Finland, so is this design and the cloth business and this fashion business, is this really the field where we can really grow? We believe so, yes, and, and uh, when I mentioned that if you ask people from abroad outside Nokia or technology, how do they see Finland? They see us as pretty strange people, uh, melancholic, something that, uh, we are not like Scandinavians, uh, you know, thinking of that. And if, as an answer to me, if you can package that in a concept, bring your Finnish stuff in that concept, your mentality, there's not many things in the world which are comparable with, with, with Finland as such. But not, I'm not talking about Lapland and ice and reindeers and stuff and Santa Clauses, but the, the mentality. Because uh, as a comparison, Swedes, if you Google Sweden, you get blonde girls, right? And Swedish flag, that's what you get. Try to Google Finland, what you get. So they are known for something. And that's more or less uh, my answer. So of course we believe in this. We believe really much in this, not saying that from this field will be another Nokia, but hopefully a couple of these. Anything else to ask? If not, with big hands, we will give Johannes very historic, very traditional Finnish design, which you can use in the middle of forests when you are on fire stairs, so please use it.